My name is Holger Burley. I'm a sleep physician and pulmonologist from Ulm, Germany, with a special interest in new ways how to treat and diagnose and work and manage patients with sleep disorder breathing. Our first interest was with lately the challenges in the treatment of central sleep apnea to look at the occurrence of central apneas during CPAP therapy, which has been studied in the last 10 years quite extensively, but rather in small numbers. And what we found in our first analysis, we took a data set of roughly 130,000 patients and looked how central apneas either emerge or go away or persist while they're using CPAP therapy for obstructive sleep apnea. And we found, surprisingly, first of all, we found that there's a large variation from day to day. So what we did, we rather looked at changes over time, so-called trajectories, than looking at individual nights on a day one or day 90. And the surprising findings are that we can see different groups, groups who never um, have any kind of central apnea, probably classic obstructive sleep apnea patients, we have patients who have central apnea from the beginning who are persisting. And then we have patients who either develop, who have emerging central apnea, or others who just have a transient problem where the problem goes away over time. So we were able with our research to define new groups. So what's the clinical value of that? The clinical value is that we're seeing that people who deal with central apnea during CPAP therapy have an increased risk of therapy termination. And that led to our second work. Then we thought, then, okay, what happens if we try to deal with this problem by switching the patient from a CPAP therapy to so-called adaptive serve ventilation, which also takes care of central apnea? And the great finding is that not only with adding adaptive serve ventilation to this risk group, we can better control sleep disorder breathing, so-called apnea hypopnea index, AHI, goes down to normal values, but also um, compliance, adherence to the therapy, which is very important to get the right outcomes out of therapy, increases while it was before decreasing when central apneas were occurring. We have created an academic industrial collaboration working on so-called big data. Big data encompasses new ways of collecting data, either through social media, but in that case through new technology, digital health, so-called telemonitoring technologies that enables us to support patients better during their setup and follow-up during so-called PEP therapy for sleep disorder breathing. This big data has a lot of challenges, of course, because it's patient data and there's no regulation yet on a global scale on how to deal with it. So we took an academic expert group with people from the US, Australia, France, and Germany together with ResMed, and we developed this expert group to work with this big data to inform the scientific and clinical community how to better deal with those patients. Um, of course, data privacy is a very important topic when we deal with patient data. And in the US, for example, where we did this analysis, we were given a waiver by IRBs because we use de-identified data purely for research purposes. This really highlights the importance, first of all, of monitoring patients because it shows that by looking at um, sleep disorder breathing over time or management of sleep disorder breathing, we get more valuable information than looking at it on a single day. What this means is we should think in our practice about how we um, engage with telemonitoring, with telehealth solutions to better manage our patients, to phenotype and better understand their problem occurring or developing over time, and then making the right changes to it to make sure that the patient continues on his successful PAP therapy, which is important then to get the outcomes that we want. There was a hesitation to use ASV lately because of heart failure, but I think in sleep disorder, breathing outside of heart failure, I think we can see the benefits of ASV in controlling better SDB with that enabling better sleep and with enabling better sleep, enabling better outcomes.